Hey guys, welcome to another ISA DOS sound card review. Today we're looking at a Sound Blaster 32 with the model number CT3670. And big thank you to Matthew from New Zealand. He donated this card to our YouTube channel. So this video might be a little bit longer because this card has so many features to offer. We will go over the general uh, layout of the card and all the connectors. We will have a ton of audio recordings to demonstrate what it can do. And of course, at the end, we're going to look at the drivers and the software. And then we're going to wrap it up with my thoughts and summary and conclusion. Let's start with the main chipset. And this one is very interesting. It is actually the chip from the AWE64. So the CT3670 is definitely a very interesting sound card. The DSP version of the sound card is 4.16, so also identical to the AWE64. At the back of the card, we've got an ID interface to connect the CD-ROM drive. And here we have two slots for SIM memory. Under DOS, you need some extra memory to load the MT32 sound bank, for example. And under Windows, you can load SF2 sound font files. Only certain configurations are possible. You always need to install two memory modules. So your options are going with two megabytes, which means uh, two one megabyte uh, memory modules. You can go with eight meg, then you need to install two four megabyte modules and maxing it out with 32 meg. That means you need to use two 16 megabyte SIM memory modules. We have only one jump on the sound card, so this sound card uses plug and play to configure all the resources. This one is called MFBEN, and this one enables the MPU-401 MIDI emulation under DOS. We will take a closer look at that later. Up here we have analog inputs, so this is where you connect the analog cable coming from the CD-ROM drive. And here we've got a PC speaker input. You need two wires coming from the motherboard headers connecting here. Make sure in the mixer that the PC speaker is not muted. And what does it sound like? Well, we've got a little recording here. Here we have all the audio ports. We've got line in, microphone in, line out, and also speaker out, which is amplified. And here you can plug in your joystick, but this is also the MIDI interface MPU-401 compatible, so you can drive an external sound canvas, for example. The sound card doesn't have a wavetable header, so really the only way for you to connect an external MIDI device is by going through the joystick port here. The good news is, because this is based on the AW64, there are no hanging note bugs, so um, that's really good. A lot of Sound Blaster 16 cards are affected by this issue. Also in Duke Nukem 3D, no MIDI slowdown bug, so you can enjoy 16-bit audio mixing as well as 44 kilohertz and still drive a general MIDI module and not get any slowdowns. I think it's time for a few sound recordings. Let's check out the FM quality first.
So that sounded quite good, but we don't have an authentic Yamaha Opel 3 with this sound card. We are dealing with Creative's CQM, which is basically their own alternative. It sounds a bit harsher and more metallic, but overall it's not a bad uh, FM implementation. Not as good as the ESFM from ESS, but much better, for example, than what we heard with the analog devices 1816 in a previous video. Now, one real highlight of this sound card is we can apply effects to the FM. So, for example, reverb and chorus, and there's also a 3D expansion option. So, we're listening next to Wing Commander 2 with uh, the normal FM music, and then we're going to turn on 30% of reverb and 30% of chorus and hear the difference. So that sounded pretty nice. It's not for everyone, but if you're playing an older game that maybe only has support for AdLib and uh, no MIDI option, this is a nice technology to uh, yeah, bring a bit of extra life and spice into those old games. So now let's focus on the Sound Blaster quality. How does it handle digital sound effects and speech? And are there any issues like with the DMA clicking bug? Mmm, I'm thirsty. I don't think you should drink that. It looks bad for you. Nonsense. It makes me feel great. Smarter. More aggressive. I feel like I could. Like I could. <laughs> Like I could. Take on the world. So that sounded very good. There are no clicks going on. So this is a really good sound card to play these older games that use the single cycle DMA mode. Now in terms of compatibility, we are compatible with the Sound Blaster and Sound Blaster 16 standard. We do not have full compatibility with the Sound Blaster Pro standard. So if you have a game and you select Sound Blaster Pro and Stereo, it will only play in mono. And people really like to blow this issue uh, out of proportion. There are basically uh, no games uh, that are affected. Basically, if you're dealing with a game that does support stereo sound for the Sound Blaster Pro, then they usually also support the Sound Blaster 16 standard. However, if you are into demos, then the situation might be a little bit different because there are demos that only support the Sound Blaster Pro with stereo and have no support for the Sound Blaster uh, 16. The Sound Blaster 16 compatibility means you can select 16-bit mixing and also sample rates up to 44 kilohertz. Let's listen to two games um, that really sound beautiful on this sound card. Just a tip, this sound card uses two DMAs, DMA1 for 8-bit and DMA5 for 16-bit. So if you're selecting the sound options in the game and you choose Sound Blaster 16 and it doesn't work with DMA1, maybe you have to select DMA5. In Turrican 2, for example, that's what you have to do. Now with the previous sound card reviews, this is usually where we uh, stop and move on to the software, but this card has a lot more to offer. It's got its own AWE synthesizer, and that's a real highlight. Now, this 
uh, can easily be confused with the MPU 401 and general MIDI, but this is really separate. Um, it lives at its own uh, address and it needs native support in games. So for example, in Doom or Duke Nukem 3D, you just select the AW option and you get uh, better music in my opinion. It doesn't sound as good as uh, a decent general MIDI device, but it's definitely a step up compared to FM. So let's listen to a few games of what that sounds like. Now Creative realized that a lot of games will not natively support the AWE synthesizer. So what they came up with is an MPU 401 emulation. For this to work, you need a couple of requirements. The jumper needs to be closed and your motherboard needs to be compatible. For example, uh, I tried an SIS chipset, Socket 7 motherboard, and the sound card uh, wouldn't work uh, in terms of emulating MPU 4.1. However, an Intel chipset motherboard and uh, another board with a BIA chipset, they were compatible. This technology also has issues with protected mode games, but let's focus on games that actually do work with this technology. We're gonna check out Sam and Max. This game supports general MIDI, but not the AWE natively. So you need to uh, put the sound card into general MIDI compatibility with the emulation, and then in the game select general MIDI, and let's listen to what it sounds like. <laughs> So that sounds pretty good, definitely better than what we're getting with FM. Now the other thing you can do is uh, set this sound card into MT32 emulation mode. Now be careful, it doesn't emulate a proper MT32, it can only do the default instruments and there's a, uh, a short list of games that uh, don't change any of the instruments. Monkey Island is a good example, so you need to have some memory, so at least um, 2 meg of RAM and then you load the MT32 uh, sound bank. By default, this is actually not included in the drivers. I will cover that later in the video and you can download the sound uh, MT32 sound bank from my website. Basically, so basically you put it into MT32 emulation and then in Monkey Island select the Roland MT32 option and this is what it sounds like. So that sounded pretty good, definitely a lot better than FM. So this whole MIDI emulation, it's not perfect and unfortunately it has a lot of requirements, but uh, it does support several games and it is still a, uh, a feature in my opinion because uh, in those games uh, that do support this technology, you're getting a huge upgrade compared to FM. Hey guys, so now we're gonna look at the software side of things, the drivers and everything. The Creative Card's a little bit more complex. They've got a tool for a lot of little tasks that some of the other sound cards have on a single page or with just one piece of software. There are two sets of drivers you need. The first one is called CTCM BBS and the other one is called the Sound Blaster Basic Disk. Both you can download from the Creative website, but also on my website, I put download links uh, down below. And these are self-executables. You run them, they will unpack themselves. And you can copy the unpacked stuff either on a, a floppy disk. So have one floppy disk for CTCM BBC, another one for SP Basic, or do it like I did, uh, just create individual directories. Once you've done that, go to SP Basic and run install. So you can press F2, check out the readme file, but we're just gonna press enter to continue the installation. Now it's gonna ask us for the CTCM disk. So in my case, it is on in CTCM BBS. In your case, it could be somewhere else or on a floppy drive. We don't have Windows and it actually picks that up. So we're just gonna press enter. It's gonna copy a few files across. Now it's gonna run the uh, plug and play manager to configure the uh, resources. It's gonna update the system files. So we just continue with the installation. 
press enter, press enter one more time and it's checking. Okay, these are the default resources. I'm gonna show you later how to change the interrupt to seven. I do this for every DOS sound card review if possible. And it's copying a few more uh, files with the drivers. And then we should be almost done. Press enter. Now it's updating the uh, config uh, startup files, the config sys and the auto exec batch file. We're done. Press F10 to reboot our machine. Okay, here we go. So we can see the plug and play manager getting loaded. It picks up the card, the resources, uh, AW, util, and, and so on. It's everything is configured. If we type in set, we can see our set blaster variable here. So let's um, change the resources, the interrupt to interrupt seven. There are two folders that we have now. The first one is CTCM. This is our plug and play manager. And we need to run CTCU, which is the uh, configuration utility to change our resources. Click on menu, plug and play cards, Creative Sound Blaster 32 plug and play, press OK. Oops, wrong button. Got to click on resources. Here we go. Now these resources, if we try to change the interrupt, for example, if we go to interrupt 5, there is no other interrupt available. We need to click on the right side here, change that to configuration 1, and now we can change things. So we've got to change this MIDI port back to 330. Uh, let's go down. We're going to change the interrupt 5 to 7. Press OK. And we're going to go down and check the DMA to 1. Press OK. Click Test. It's going to check out all the resources, making sure there are no uh, clashes with other cards in your system. And once that's done, we press OK. OK. OK, menu, exit, enter path for Windows. We don't have Windows, so we just press cancel and let's restart our machine. OK, let's see if everything got updated. So we can see it here. Interrupt 7 is now showing up. That's wonderful. If you're getting any errors at this stage, go into the Sound Blaster 16 directory, which is the second directory that got created and run Diagnose. Press Enter. It's going to scan uh, for your card. It's going to ask for memory test. So depending on how much memory uh, your card has, uh, it's going to take a little bit longer. We only have 2 meg, so it shouldn't take uh, too long at all. Um, if you've got 28, then it takes a little bit longer. But it's worth checking that your memory is OK. I've had an AW64 where the memory was faulty. Press enter to continue. And now it's going to scan for all the other resources. MIDI port on 3.30. We've got the interrupt on 7. Low DMA on 1. So this is a sound blaster. Um, it can do 16-bit, uh, so it's got a high DMA channel 5, which is important to know. Um, some games you actually have to enter DMA 5. And now you can test all your things here, if music works and so on. And I haven't got any speakers connected, so we can't hear them. Alrighty, and then you've got a choice, either quit or update the system settings. I haven't changed anything, I'm just going to press F3 and quit. But if you saw an error message when booting, then just press F10 to update your system settings and that should fix it. And the last thing we're going to, not the last thing, the second last thing we're going to look at is, is the mixer. Type in mixer set, we get, get our mixer. So I'm just going to show you how to tweak it for uh, low noise. If you don't have a CD audio cable connected, you can turn that off. If you have nothing on the line in, you can turn it off. If you don't have a microphone connected, turn that off. And also if you don't have a PC speaker routed through, also turn that off. Everything else, I leave default, but I usually tweak the uh, treble and the bass. I do the treble a little bit lower and I put the bass uh, one above the medium. Um, automatic gain control, I think we disabled that. We can untick all of these. These are just for recording. We're not doing any recording. Set the gain to 1. The output, if you're routing through a CD audio, this needs to be ticked and also this needs to be uh, unmuted. I don't have any CD audio at the moment, so we're turning all that off and the gain to 1. And that's it. Press save and we're done.
And the other thing I quickly want to show you is the awutil software slash question mark. It gives you all the options. And this is where you can um, turn on the uh, emulation for General Media or MT32 uh, or add some chorus and reverb effects. And basically you just follow these instructions. So if you want to add 30% chorus and 30% reverb to our FM, we go slash R colon 30 and slash C colon 30. And you'll see a little uh, graph here, 30% for chorus and reverb. Let's look at general MIDI emulation. So we type in awutil and then em colon uh, gm. So that's this option here, enable general MIDI emulation, press enter. And this should work just fine. The sound card doesn't need any additional uh, memory, no SIM memory uh, for this to function. However, if we want to do the MT32 emulation, so we go slash em colon MT32, we will actually get an error. It's looking for this file, which is not included by default. It, it is available on my website. You can download it from there. And you need to put it into the uh, SF bank folder, sound font bank folder. So if we have a look here, we should see the um, general MIDI sound bank and you just put the MT32 sound bank in that same folder and then the MT32 emulation should work. However, you need uh, extra memory on your card. I only have two meg and that was enough for this to work. But that's really it in terms of the software. So lots of little tools uh, spread all over the place, but they're all quite comfortably uh, comfortable to use and straightforward. So I'm going to attempt to summarize the sound card, which is a bit difficult because it has so many features. Let's start with the negatives this time because it's a fairly short list. The uh, really only negative is really that it doesn't have the uh, authentic Yamaha OPL3. The creative implementation is not bad, but it's not the real thing and everyone has a different take on that. The other issue that a lot of people like to bring up is that it's not compatible with the Sound Blaster Pro, but it's not an issue at all. There are basically no games that have stereo support with the Sound Blaster Pro and do not support the Sound Blaster 16 anyway. And we don't have a wavetable header, unfortunately, but it's not a big deal. We have a bug-free MPU 401 MIDI interface and you can get devices that you can attach here uh, to drive uh, your wavetable module externally. So in terms of positives, let's start with the Sound Blaster compatibility. Firstly, no DMA clicking. So this is excellent for playing really old games that use the single cycle DMA mode. And we have full 16-bit uh, as well as 44 kilohertz support for later games that take advantage of that quality. The ability to add effects to the FM like chorus, uh, reverb and also 3D stereo expansions. Those are really interesting features. I know they're not for everyone but um, I really like that because you can uh, spice up all those old games and they sound a little bit more modern. We have the AW synthesizer and a lot of games natively support it. There are also patches for popular games that add native support as well. And you also get the uh, MPU-401 MIDI emulation under DOS. Um, it doesn't work with uh, every game, there are a lot of restrictions, but for the games that do work with this technology, it is also a huge step up from the FM quality. If you're into loading sound fonts, especially in Windows 98 and then uh, playing games in a DOS session. This is also a good sound card. It doesn't use any of those proprietary memory modules. You can just use standard SIM modules, which should be fairly easy to source. And I do really like the software. Yes, they use uh, several tools that some of the other sound cards uh, manage with just a single tool or even like on a single screen, being able to change all the resources and the mixer on one single page. So that might be perceived as a bit of a negative, but once you're familiar with all the tools, I think they're all well done. Uh, you can use the mouse for most of them. And yeah, installation shouldn't be too uh, difficult, at least under pure MS-DOS. So that sounds pretty good. This is one powerhouse sound card with a lot of features and interesting technologies going on. There's uh, another downside and that is unfortunately the price. So I had a look on eBay 
And creative cards are quite sought after these days and a lot of collectors out there that, uh, yeah, just add another sound card to their collection and never to be seen again. So I had a look on eBay. I found two of these sound cards for around 40 to 50 US dollars, which is not too bad. I mean, it's getting up there, but this is um, a very feature rich sound card. Let's put it that way. And the third listing there was around $90 and that's where it gets a little bit silly. So um, yeah, you might have to uh, dig a bit deeper in your wallet to get the sound card or just be very patiently, uh, very patient and, and look for uh, auctions, you know, maybe listings that are incorrectly identified or maybe a pile of sound cards and this one happens to be amongst them. Or maybe you're uh, lucky and you live in a town with some uh, thrift stores and um, yeah, note down that model number CT3670, definitely well worth getting. So this is a sound card I can highly recommend. Um, and I can also recommend all the AW64 cards, which is basically the same thing. This is really an AW64 disguised as a uh, Sound Blaster 32. So there you have it. That was the Sound Blaster 32 CT3670, a feature-rich sound card with a lot of nifty features and definitely well worth acquiring if you can get it for the right price. And that's really it for this video, guys. Um, if you enjoyed it, uh, if you found it useful, give it a like, uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and click on that notification bell. And that's really it for this video. Any questions or comments or feedbacks about the sound card, leave them down below in the comment section. I read every single comment. And that's it for this video. I shall see you soon with another one.